today we have some of the cheapest and most expensive webcams out there. We are even going to use our phone as a webcam so you can decide what you should buy for streaming, content creation, video calls, you name it. We're going to start with a webcam I've never tested before. It's an extremely popular one. It's the Logitech Brio. Now this is a 4K webcam. It costs around $146. So it's definitely not a cheap webcam, but it's definitely cheaper than some of the other options like the Elgato Facecam Pro. This is an expensive thing. I think it's $300. We also have some much cheaper options, but we're gonna test out this right now. The webcam comes with a pretty long USB-C cable. All right, now I'm going to add the webcam in OBS Studio as a video capture device. So Logitech Brio, it's advertised as 4K. And there we go, it jumps full screen now. Okay, this is definitely not a bad webcam. And I'm really looking forward to comparing it to this EMI T960. But you're gonna see two huge differences between this $30 webcam and then that which is 150, I don't remember exactly. And the first one is that behind me, you can see that the lights are pretty much all visible. Like those panels, for example, you can actually see some kind of detail. You can even see these tiny white lines in the panels. Now, this is absolutely not going to be the case with this cheap webcam. Now, the second thing that looks good with this one and that definitely won't look good with the cheap one is look at my skin tones. They look very, very natural. The blue in the background also looks good. So it's really capturing the color pretty well. By the way, this is 4K. Look at the quality if I zoom in this hard. But look at my eye. It doesn't look very sharp. So we can go to configure video and I'm gonna try to change the focus. Okay, this seems to be much better. And the image should be even more focused right now. But this webcam does look good full screen and it would definitely look good if you use it in the corner while gaming like this. And now I'd like to show you what you can get with a webcam like this, which is pretty similar in a lot of aspects. However, it's $30 instead of 150. All right, so now we have the EMI C960. It's the webcam that I mentioned before. It costs $30, it's 1080p, and it's also a wide angle webcam, just like the Logitech Brio. All right, I have it in OBS here. I'm gonna make it 1080p now. That's what the webcam is. And this is what the EMI C960 looks like. Now we're really quick mention as you can see i was able to connect this to my desk stand you can obviously connect this on your monitor like a lot of webcams however why i mention it is that the logitech brio didn't have this type of connection on the back as you can see the logitech brio cannot be connected to any stand it can just be clamped on top of a monitor now i'm trying to compare how wide this webcam is so this right here was the logitech brio and i think both of them are pretty similar my editor will put them next to each other and look at the difference in my skin tone when i use auto white balance. Now in OBS we can disable auto white balance and then we can change it which definitely allows us to make it a bit more natural but I've played around with these settings already it's never gonna look as good. My skin does look better the background looks a bit blue purplish however again definitely usable especially for $30 but the big thing I did mention this before look at the panels behind me there is no detail they're completely white but the worst thing is that right here you can see there's overexposure and if I move the camera now it's right here and it's actually not that bad but you have to realize that I'm in a perfectly lit studio as you can see there's a big softbox on me that produces very diffused light light that definitely shouldn't cause a white spot and even with perfect lighting it still doesn't look that good in general now I might be complaining a bit hard so I'm gonna show you footage from my previous video this was with a budget lighting setup and when I turned the room light on behind me it was definitely usable it just depends on what you want to use this for as I said in my previous video if you want to make this webcam smaller smaller and then put it in the corner while you're gaming. I mean, it's definitely going to be usable for that, right? It doesn't really matter that much. However, if you want to go full screen, then this webcam is definitely not going to make your stream look high quality or professional. Then next we have two really interesting options. These are Elgato's two webcams, the Facecam and then the Facecam Pro. This here is a normal Facecam and on Amazon, whoops, on Amazon, it costs $150. And that means that this webcam is going to try to compete with the previous Logitech Brio. And then this here, the Facecam Pro, I cannot find it on Amazon, but I did find it on their website and it's listed for $300. Now, $300, that means that it's gonna be in the same price range as buying this type of camera. Another model, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But if you buy a 1080p system camera on eBay, it's gonna be around $350. You might need a capture card with some of them, so it might run up the cost a bit. It's really important to see if it's worth spending $300 on a webcam. If you can save it for $350 or $400, 400 and then get a much better camera for example okay let's start with the 150 dollar webcam now elgato does have software for their webcams so on the elgato website we can go to downloads say face cam and then here camera hub all right this is obviously way too bright i did 
tweak some settings. This seems to be about the best I can get it. The lights behind me are very bright for some reason. I can't get them to be dark blue. Like what we saw right here with the Logitech Brio. Even if I reduce the exposure, I mean, then it just gets too dark. Maybe that's what happened with the Brio. However, for this webcam, I think this here is about the right thing to do. And you can adjust the sharpness, but this is definitely sharp. I did only add a tiny bit. So you choose between zero and then four is the max. Now look at my beard changing and stuff. This is definitely too much. I think three might be usable. You can also easily change the white balance. Like this, I look pretty pale and blue. We can move it to the right and it becomes more and more yellow. I really like the look of this. However, I still can't get over how light blue this looks, but I can't seem to get rid of it. We will compare it like this to the other webcams. All right. Now let's take a huge jump from $150 to $300 from the same company. I've never really compared them. This is going to be really interesting. The previous one was 1080p. This one is 4K. So this is what it looks like when I just connected to the PC. We are in the software. Now something I did forget to mention that's really important. Also with the previous camera, there are effects on the top. But I think this is only available if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. But you can add blur. And as you see, the background is more blurred now. More like a professional camera. We can increase it. Now it looks very fake of course you can see it around my finger when i move them around you can see artifacts but in general if you're just there talking definitely if you don't overdo it this can absolutely help to create more depth and you can change it to other things like pictures you can upload your own picture to move to so a lot of options this is what it looks like by default i did play around with the settings now it's pretty hard for the webcams to deal with the background here with all the blue that's going on and doing all the settings manually and finding something all people will like it's not that easy i went for a pretty colorful image with a lot of saturation my shirt was definitely not this red by default we can see that sometimes the lines are still there sometimes they aren't also depending on the shot the webcam is definitely auto focusing pretty well as you can see it always just sharpens my eye and since this is a 4k webcam we can zoom in in the software and look at this Look at how sharp it is, even when you zoom in this much. This is a 400% zoom, look at that. We can actually focus on Ash there in the background. And to give you perspective, look at how much we were zooming in. That is actually impressive for a webcam. Now, if we compare this to the normal face cam from Elgato, this face cam pro, according to me, definitely shows more natural skin tones. So with this, I can go from white and pale to then yellowish. This is kind of in the middle. With the face cam pro, it looked more pink and more natural, but yeah, I'll put them next to each other and then you can just see the difference it's gonna be really interesting comparing the facecam pro to these two real cameras and we're gonna test the most budget webcams of this video in a minute i did some testing already and i was really impressed especially with the razor webcam but first we're gonna check out these two system cameras now this is the sony a6000 and the one i'm actually recommending is a sony a5100 but they're gonna look very similar they are both 1080p system cameras by sony the same price range you can actually Actually find this one for about 380 or 400 but it has features you don't need this is what the camera looks like and i'm seeing it on that screen there it looks very impressive you can also see that my skin is smoothened it gets done automatically by the camera so this is what that camera would look like while streaming the way i connected this camera is with a dummy battery on the inside so as you can see i'll take it out this is a dummy battery and it has the shape of a normal battery however it's connected with usb power and then that goes in a normal power outlet and that way you can just keep streaming with this camera it won't turn off because it has infinite power and then the other connector here is to get the image to our pc this is a micro hdmi so you need a micro hdmi to hdmi converter and then this hdmi needs to go in a capture card that goes to the pc this is an elaborate setup but this is what professional streamers use you can also upgrade to this which is a 4k system camera or you can go even higher like what streamers like miski for example are using and that will be the quality i'm filming myself with right now that's an expensive 4k sony camera however this one is gonna come really really close and this is about seven to eight hundred dollars this is the sony zve 10 and also if you're going for something like that camera the lens that you're seeing right now is the kit lens however that's a pretty crappy lens in general so you could upgrade to this lens here it got on my radar i think like two years ago because of harris heller and i'm gonna switch to this one in one two three 
All right, now the main thing that this did, or pretty much the only thing I think, is the background blur will be better. Now, is this worth it? This lens here comes with the camera. Maybe if you buy it secondhand, it's without the lens, but in general, it comes with the camera and the upgrade is I think three or four hundred dollars. But if you want to use this as a main content creation camera for YouTube and streaming, for example, then it can definitely be worth it. So I will add links to all of this in the description, the dummy battery, the capture card, the lens, the different cameras. If you want to be a creator in general, it's definitely worth it to get the system camera. Okay, we're going to move a bit quicker now. These are the webcams below a hundred dollars. This Logitech C270 costs twenty two dollars. So then above that, we have the e -Meet. that was $30 we already checked it out then we have the Logitech C920 at $58 and then we have the Razer Kaijo Pro this is $94 people love this webcam it's also a huge one and it looks very professional it's very big it looks like something you want on your monitor this webcam looks very premium <laughs> look at this okay so I just added the cheapest webcam of today this is the biggest image I can get it's square so you could put it like this in the corner and for that it's gonna be a useful webcam full screen like this well in that case it's not gonna be that good of an option also this webcam is very zoomed in i mean compare this to some of the other wide angle webcams this is about the furthest i can keep it away from me and it's still struggling to show more than only my face so if you put this on a monitor it will look like this unless of course you balance it on something else and then you go sit further away in this case i could definitely see this working it's not horrible definitely not for 22 dollars so i will show a side by side of the 30 dollar webcam and then this 22 dollar one all right so this is the Logitech C920. This must be one of the most popular webcams out there. Now, what you see right now is a great example of it not handling the blue colors on the background well. So it's adjusting the colors in order to make the whole thing appear normal. However, it's not normal. This whole studio is blue. And because of that, my face is very white. I will turn around. However, the lighting is much worse than. So again, here with the lights on the background, it's kind of struggling. If I move away like this to a kind of normal scene, this is the quality that you will get. However, a lot of people will want colors on the background. And in that case, this here is the quality that you will get. I will put a few comparisons on the screen that are relevant right now with some prices. However, we really need to check out this right here, this chunky beast. It comes with a really clean cable in the box. I must say this webcam feels very high quality, feels very premium. We gotta see the result, but I feel like this is gonna look similar to the Elgato webcam. That's 150 while this is 98. Oh wow, look at that. Out of the box, it looks like this this it looks pretty evenly lit my skin colors are definitely decent i don't think i should adjust them more because i'm gonna look too pale or too saturated or too blue let's take a look at the panels behind us oh the most detail we've never had that detail before because look besides these lines here which we didn't see before we also see lines on the outside and then the area in the middle it is no wonder that so many people are impressed with this webcam also look at the autofocus look at how sharp it is and this is an impressive webcam the razer kaiju Pro $98. I mean, I'm not gonna adjust any settings because this is amazing. One extra thing so this is full HD, but it's also 60 FPS, which means that as you can see, when I move my hand, this is very smooth. And some people like that because when you're gaming, it's probably in 60 FPS for the stream, and it can look like your webcam that's 30 FPS can be lagging behind because the game is so responsive. However, with this webcam, you are as responsive as your game. Now, to use your phone as a webcam, you're probably going to need a phone clip. This allows you to easily clamp your phone like this and then you can connect the stand right here or a stand here. Now if you have an Android device then Droidcam is the way to go. I'll talk about the process in a minute. This is EpoCam, this is for iPhones and it's really simple. You just install the application on your phone. I have the free application right here and as you can see it is searching for my PC and so then this software is needed but it's the one we used for the Elgato webcams. I just connected my phone to my PC. Now I did use the free version so there is a watermark but obviously if you use OBS you can just cut that bottom part off and then the watermark is gone also if you use the pro version which is seven or eight dollars the quality will be better this is 720p then it will use 1080 this is an iphone 12 pro max obviously it's an expensive phone but a while back i used an iphone 5 for this and the quality also didn't look bad not as good as a 300 dollars webcam but absolutely usable and since it connects to the elgato software you can also use these sliders here to change 
how the picture looks. I mean, the lights are also great. The dynamic range of this camera is good. If you have an Android phone, I will link a video in the description because I did use Droid Cam in the past and I showed how to install it and stuff. This quality is amazing. All right, now I'm going to show all the webcams one by one. I will put the name on the screen. The price will also be on the screen and that way you will get a clear overview of how these webcams all looked. After that, I will show all of them on the screen, but this one by one comparison will be the best one that you will get. My favorite from today was definitely the Razer Kaijo. From what I could see on my screen, it definitely looked on par with the face cam from Elgato. Now the Elgato webcams do integrate with the Stream Deck, which is useful. However, once you set up your webcam and the lighting is correctly, you don't need to change anything about it. And once you go more expensive than the Razer Kaijo Pro, I feel like you're not getting that much extra because you can still definitely see that it's a webcam. You can still see that the background blur isn't there. The dynamic range probably isn't there. So in my opinion, the Razer Kaijo Pro is the highest I would go. And above that, I would start saving up for a second hand system camera. For example, the Sony A5100. The Razer Kaiju looked amazing for $98. And from what I've seen today, if you're not getting a camera, I would get that one. Now, if you want to see all the streaming setups I've built, you can click on that video or that video will be recommended to you. So hopefully it's something you want to click on. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in my next video. Have a nice day.